Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Kai and without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into today's video. So for today's nail set, we're actually going to be doing one that I found on Pinterest and I've actually been finding so many amazing nail sets on Pinterest lately, but I promise I will be coming with a freestyle very soon and I'm super excited about that. But anyways, we're going to be doing some fall flower nails. And again, I did see this nail set on Pinterest and by the way, I actually found this in the summer of this year, but I really wanted to wait to do it because I felt like the colors were giving more autumn than summer so we're going to be going ahead and tackling that today so as always i'm just going to start out with some nail prep and the first thing i'm going to do is of course get all of my implements ready and before i do anything i'm just going to make sure to disinfect my implements as well as my nails now previous to this video i did go ahead and completely disinfect them already but i do like to be extra careful and just make sure that everything is nice and sanitized So the first thing that I'm going to do is push back my cuticles using this cuticle pusher tool. And I do not think that this is actually a cuticle pusher, but I feel like it works really well to go ahead and lift up everything at the cuticle area without having to put too much force on it. And as you guys may know, I am going to wait to do my pinky because I'm currently treating it for nail fungus, so I will do that just a little bit later. Next, I'm going to go ahead and with my cuticle nippers and just cut back the excess skin. This part I try and be super careful with because I've had issues where I've cut too far and that has led to a lot of issues that I definitely did not feel like dealing with. So for this part, I'm really just making sure to cut anything that's sort of white and crusty and just ready to come off. As for the actual skin, I'm trying my best not to mess with it too much. And if you're feeling pain or you notice that you're bleeding, that means you are cutting too far. So definitely make sure to be very careful during this process. Next, I'm just going to cut down the excess length using my nail clippers. Now before I go in with my peel off base coat, I'm just going to very gently buff the surface. Now this is not to remove the shine from the nails per se, but I feel like this step definitely helps to prevent the peel off base coat from shrinking because I do like to use an oil as a base for my peel off base coat. And because of the oil, it does like to shrink away from the cuticle area. So this definitely helps to prevent that and keep everything in place. So 
So for my peel off base coat, I'm going to be using my McCart peel off base coat along with their cuticle oil. So basically I just like to put a little bit of oil on the surface of my nails. And the reason I do this is because I need my nail sets to come off directly after I'm finished. And this peel off base coat is a little bit strong and it can stick pretty well if you're not careful. So the oil just provides a nice bit of slip for the ending process when I go ahead and take everything off. But if you want these to last a little bit longer, so maybe even a few days to a week, I would definitely recommend just skipping the oil altogether and going straight in with two layers of the peel off base coat. I'm going to be doing two layers here as well and I'm making sure to carry each layer. gel and I haven't noticed any issues with it popping off or anything like that unless I don't file the inside of the nail tip however I feel like I really want to try it out on a nail set that I'm actually doing to last just to see if the longevity is the same but anyways I will be covering the inside of the nail tip using that builder gel and then I am placing just a small amount of gel onto the center of my nail and the reason I do that is because again these nail tips are full cover nail tips and they do have a built-in apex and I want to make sure that that apex is 
nice and filled in when I press it down. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up pressing it too flat because there's not enough gel. And then my nails are gonna start to curve downwards and that's not really the look that I'm going for. And just a heads up, if you do end up using a builder gel like this, do bear in mind that the heat spikes can be quite crazy, especially because we are using a good amount of gel and it's pretty thick. So yeah, the heat spikes are kind of crazy. So with that being said, do not flood your nails with too much gel because one, it's unnecessary and you will get flooding. Here, and I'm making sure not to file into my actual nails.
We'll paint just to round out the edges in the center. And now we're going to get into the rhinestone swirls. I'm not exactly sure what this is trying to depict, but it kind of felt like maybe this was like the center of a pool of water. And then there were waves coming out from the star. And I thought that this was really, really nice. So I'm just going to be taking this rhinestone glue and I'm going to be putting this on in a circular direction. And I want to keep most of the detail towards the center of the star. So that would be towards the bottom right side of the snail. So as for the cuticle area, I'm not really doing too much there at all and in between each swirl or two i do like to make sure just to flash cure it because i want that 3d effect to still remain even while i'm working on other areas so don't be afraid to just stick your hand in every once in a while just to make sure that everything is nice and in place so a little side note as i'm doing this voiceover it is currently raining like so hard outside right now but the rain just has me thinking like i know it's not just me but can we talk about how warm it is this fall it's honestly very scary as I'm saying this, I am fully aware of the fact that this is probably going to be the coldest fall that we are going to see in a very long time. And I'm just like so sick of it. Like I'm ready for it to start getting below 30s and just like get freezing cold. And I'm hoping that maybe this winter it'll actually snow. I don't think it snowed that much last year and it's just been getting worse every single year. And I live in Pennsylvania, like in the mountains, like even still the weather has been very tame, which is kind of scary like honestly it's just been not great and i know that that's the result of climate change and i don't know you guys like i'm so ready for it to just get cold i think it's actually going to start getting cold in december which feels so so late and it just makes me so sad like honestly it's just so bad but anyways i wanted to say that because i want to know what the weather is like in your area and if it's drastically different from how it normally is i know for some people they say it's normal for some people they say it's warmer or some people say it's colder. So let me know in the comments, you know, what's going on in your area and is the weather like really playing games? Like what's going on? And another reason as to why I wanted to mention that is because this is one of the reasons why I kind of saved this nail set for this late into November because literally outside, it looks like the beginning of fall when it's basically the end of fall which is really weird so i felt like this nail set would be appropriate for this time of year because honestly it's still kind of warm like i went outside today and it was 60 degrees like what's going on like we need to sit down and have a chat about what's happening like we know what's happening but we still need to talk about it because we still don't seem to get it you know what i'm saying like it's just bad but yeah that's kind of one of the reasons why i saved the snail set because it feels very appropriate for the fall but like the beginning of the fall but because it still feels like the beginning of the fall i was like you know what i feel like this is okay now one thing i will say is that i probably should have switched out some of the colors so instead of going for that bright red flower in the center of the middle finger maybe i could have gone for like an orange or something Something like that so if you are recreating the snail set that might be something you want to think about now speaking of these flowers we're finally going to go ahead and get into those so for today i'm going to be using this solid nail glue gel from mccart and this is the clear version and i think i'm at a point where i need to find a version that has different colors because i did end up taking big globs of this solid nail glue gel and i mixed in gel polish into it which obviously messes with the consistency and just makes it a lot more difficult to work with so with that being said said i would not recommend mixing this product with gel polish because it just makes it extra sticky and for whatever reason whenever i use this product it's sticky all by itself so even without the gel polish it's pretty difficult to work with as you guys know i do kind of touch this with my hands a lot which again i would not recommend as you guys have pointed out it's really not good to use your fingers when you're working with this product but for whatever reason i feel like whenever i try and touch it with my gloves it sticks like crazy so i feel like i can only use my actual hands and like my skin so yeah if you guys know of any good solid nail glue gels that don't get super sticky and that are colored, definitely let me know in the comments and I will make sure to check those out. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get into the flower on this middle finger. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll it in between my fingers and flatten it. This is gonna help to create really nice and thin petals. And I also feel like my fingerprints kind of help to give it a little bit of texture. And once I have that placed onto my nail, I'm just gonna work it and sort of bend the petals a little bit using this silicone tool. And because this is a flower, 
I do like to put a little bit of emphasis into these sort of frills on the outer edge of the petals. But of course, depending on what flower you do, that might not necessarily even make sense. So make sure to have a reference photo next to you if you feel like you need one. So now that I have the petals on, I'm gonna work on creating a little bit of dimension. And for that, I'm gonna be using this jelly red peachy color. And I'm just gonna be painting this inside the very center of the petal. Now this required a good bit of layers and I actually ended up mixing in some red and purple just to kind of deepen it a little bit more. And once I was kind of happy with where the color was at this stage, I decided to add another layer of those petals. These ones are slightly smaller because I don't wanna take away from the larger petals in the background. I think this also helps to add a little bit more depth and kind of give it a more realistic feel. But of course, it's definitely not necessary. If you're good with the three, then definitely stick with that. And as you can see, here is where I started to add more of those purpley colors. It's a lot more of a vibrant red rather than a peachy color. And once I was settled on the dimension in the flower petals, I went in with a little bit of that dark brown in the center just to finish off this flower. Now I'm gonna be taking some of this yellow gel polish and I'm just gonna mix it into the existing solid no glue gel on the top. And here is the beginning of me having issues with this gel because obviously at this point, I'm starting to mix too much color into this. Now, luckily for this part, I didn't have too many issues with sticking, but it was starting to get a little bit bad and 
at some point I did have to mix in a little bit more of the gel just to balance out the ratio between the gel and the color gel if that makes any sense I don't know but anyways after I've mixed in that yellow I'm going to use this solid nail glue gel to create some yellow spheres on this nail and I feel like this definitely helped to create a little bit of contrast and just make this nail come alive honestly And after I've done the flower on that nail, I'm going to pretty much do the same deal on my ring finger, except this flower is going to be a lot more round and there's going to be five petals instead of three. And it's going to be green. So as you can see, I'm mixing more gel polish into this. And like I said, I did mix in a little bit more of that solid nail glue gel just to even it out and just to make sure that it's not sticking all over the place. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, sometimes the frills don't really make too much sense. So for this flower, I wasn't too focused on making it super frilly. There are a few here and there, but I wanted this to look mainly flat and kind of straight if that makes any sense. And I didn't really include this too much because it would have been super repetitive, but after every petal or two, I do like to flash cure for about five to 10 seconds. Even though this gel is pretty thick, it still can move around and kind of droop if you let it sit for too long. So flash curing it for a little bit will just help keep it in place. And once I've got those green petals on, I'm gonna go with the same deal that I did on my middle finger. I'm gonna be adding some little balls towards the tip of the snail, but instead of it being yellow, it's gonna be white. Now this flower is slightly different because it actually has a center and I don't exactly know what it's supposed to be. I'm not too savvy with flowers, honestly, I don't know. But I did end up using a little bit of this pink solid nail glue gel just to create that sort of elongated center like right in the middle. And this was a bit tedious and I don't think that I really got the effect that I was going for. But I think in the end, after I added the gel polishes and just gave it some dimension, it definitely came together. And I'm also adding a tiny little ball in the center and I'm gonna poke a hole in it and just kind of spread it out so that it almost looks hollow in the center. And of course, once that's done, I'm going in with some green gel polish for the petals just to give it a little bit of dimension. I wasn't too concerned with making this one super in depth. I'm just adding a touch of green just to give it a slight ombre from the center of the flower to the edges.
And for that little centerpiece, I'm going to be going in with the same red that I used for the flower on my middle finger. And once I'm done, I'm going in with some brown gel polish just to create some dots on that centerpiece. And then I'm going in with a darker green for the dots on the petals. So now we're going to jump back to our thumbnail and we're going to finish this one off by adding some gold pearls. Now in the reference photo, I really do not know what they used. So I felt like a good substitute or a good enough substitute was just these gold pearls because I didn't have anything else that was too similar to that. But I do like how these pearls just added a little bit of interest and made this nail stand out just a little bit more than it did prior to me adding these. So now I'm just going to finish off these nails with some top coat. So I did my pinky nail off camera and it's virtually the same thing that I did on my pointer finger. So here is what it is looking like. And now I'm going to finish off this nail set with some cuticle oil. And that completes today's set. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one. This nail set turned out a lot better than I was expecting, actually. I did kind of switch around the order of these nails and kind of selected the ones that I wanted to do and got rid of the ones that I didn't want to do. And honestly, I'm so glad that I did that. I feel like these nails really come together and just give fall like, and I just really love these. I would say my favorite nails are definitely my thumbnail as well as my middle finger. There are a few areas where I feel like I could have done a little bit better. Of course, when it comes to the ombre, I wasn't too happy about that because the colors were slightly dull. And I think if I had the airbrush tool, it would have been a lot better. So yeah, let me know how you guys feel about me trying out an airbrush. I think it's time I get one. But of course, let me know what you guys think of this nail set in the comments. Even though there's a whole like ton of flowers, I really feel like this speaks to fall because of the brown and the green. And you guys know I love brown. I love green. Like I love those colors. So if I were to put this nail set on a scale of one to 10, 
I would definitely give this nail set a good 9 out of 10. Again, I feel like the ombres could have been better, but honestly, I can't complain too much. Again, this came out so much better than I thought it would, so I can't be too mad at myself. So yeah, overall, I think this nail set is a success. Also, I just want to say, I know this video was kind of chatty, like I was really rambling on and on and on, as I usually do, but I really do hope that you guys enjoy this one, especially if you've been asking for more chatty videos. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my rambles, and... I'm very excited to come back with next week's video. I'm hoping to do something a little bit different than what I usually do, so I'm pretty excited about that. And yeah, I just hope that you guys enjoy this one, and I really do hope that you guys are taking care of yourselves as well. But as always, I want to say thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today, and I will see you guys in the next one.